against tide we have been lucky enough joseph and i to get an invite out whiting fishing with the mayor of turidan himself fabian valella is that, is that your last name right you said it right nailed it, fabian <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> um so we're up the tiny feeder channels at the top end of western port i'll let fabian explain it a little bit further this is what he's good at so quite unusually for me i've literally just jumped on the boat and I'm just going to watch and shut my big mouth for the day and actually learn some stuff. Um, and the other thing we're doing today is having a O'Brien real estate conference on the water because we've got the two top salesmen here and I'm going to give them some salesman tips. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you guys. Yeah, we're at a uh, business trip today and uh, it's fully tax deductible. Tax so. <laughs> um, but uh, no, you're right, Dave. We are fishing up the top end of uh, Western Port Bay chasing the... Uh, the uh, King George Whiting, which is uh, very popular in the Turidan area, the whole of Western Port Bay. But uh, these uh, upper reaches hold a lot of whiting and some good whiting, which uh, at the moment they're fishing really well for the start of autumn. So. so for people who are not from Victoria, potentially out of state, what's so special about our King George Whiting? Why do you, why does, because people love them here. It's a, it's a religion. Great sport fish to catch with the whole family, um, especially if you're introducing children to fishing. It's something that they can uh, they can really uh, obviously catch on to quickly. Um, and they're one of the best things is they're probably one of the best eating fish actually in the bay. So, so hard fighting, good tasting, hundred percent. A lot of upside. So. Can we get a quick little run through of the rod reel rig that you're running here? Yeah. Okay. So I've got uh, obviously Shimano set up. So. Um, it's actually uh, probably not the ideal whiting rod, but it's a, uh, believe it or not, it's a soft plastic. It's a, it's a Raider uh, Shimano soft plastic rod. I'm using a, uh, oh, probably half a metre of uh, dropper and then uh, a Black Magic Circle KL hook. So with a nice bit of pippy on there. Um, these hooks are fantastic. The whiting tend to hook themselves and uh, especially if you're fishing with children, the kids can just pop it over and the, uh, the fish will, uh, will hook himself 90% of the time it'll be in the corner of the jaw so which makes it uh, easy to unhook and if you've got to release them perfect perfect for joseph and children <laughs> <laughs> so, so you don't need you really don't need expensive rods and reels for whiting it's just you know something a, a two to four kilo sort of rod you don't um, you sort of if uh, the kids are getting into it you can certainly take them down to kmart and buy the uh, jarvis walker set up and uh, get them on the water yep braid or mono i use braid yep. um I use, I do use braid with, um, with a leader um, attached. I feel I, uh, the contact's a lot better, obviously, with the fish. So, so as it sits there is virtually how it's going to sit on the bottom. That's Wafting exactly. Wafting around enticingly. So you're just bouncing the sinker off the bottom to maintain contact? That's, that's exactly right. Yep. So, oh, on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he calling this a whiting? I reckon it is. This is it's legitimately first drop here, people. It's only little. Oh. But it is a whiting. That's a whiting? It is a whiting. It's a start. Oop. So It's more of a fish finger, that one. It is. But so what's the size limit on whiting? Fabian? 27 centimetres, but uh, I don't like to keep anything in my boat unless they're over 30 centimetres. Over 30 centimetres, so... Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a little juvie. Absolutely so. gorgeous. All right, we'll send that one back. Oop. That's a yeah, perfect release. whiting release. <laughs> yeah, there, there's something in that. A lot of people do not like releasing whiting while on a whiting bite. I know you have to because it's undersized. It's an old myth. Um, whiting are very... They, whiting love... When you drop an anchor, whiting actually, if you're on a school, they will disappear, but they'll come back. Mm. Um, 
And uh, yeah, there uh, people always say, you know, the old school used to be, I'll drop the anchor over slowly, don't make too much noise, you'll spook the whiting, but definitely not. Yep. So, um, Ooh, house sale. Could be. <laughs> so, but yep. um, but yeah, so no, whiting, uh, yeah, don't be afraid, make noise, don't be scared of dropping the, uh, putting the smaller fish back because they'll just school up again and come back. So, and if you're, if you're putting the food out there for them, they'll feed. Yep. Hey, something quite interesting is um, Joseph and I sometimes go flapping around in the ocean at, at uh, Flinders Mushroom Reef, Marine Park. There's a massive whiting in there. I don't know if you know that, Fabian. No. Um, not, allowed to, not allowed to catch them, but they're literally like 40 to 50 centimetres. and you, you can snorkel around with them. And if you put your fins on the sand and puff up the sand, they come in straight yeah. away. Yep, that's that's exactly right. So, um I tend to not use burly uh, fishing the top end of uh, Western Port Bay because the current obviously runs. The only time I'll use some some chook pellets is actually, you know, when the tide does slow down to try and bring the uh, the fish closer to the boat. But every now and then, when you're whiting fishing, if you lift uh, lift your sinker up and down, it creates a puff of sand in the uh, in the water, which is like a natural burly for them, and they gather around it. And uh, if you've got the bait wafting there and it's moving, well, they'll uh, they'll attack it. The fish will definitely attack it. So. All right, we're going to get a full spread going here and it'll be, when they're on, there's screaming and and happiness, fish flying into the boat. Look at Joey. Yahooing already. <laughs> been, been wanting to tee this up for a little while. Uh, Fab is very, very good. He grew up in Turidan. He knows these waters like the back of his hand. It's very, very exciting. The drizzle's just about to stop and I reckon the fish are going to switch on. He's on there. Got him. What is it, Davey? It's a whiting, Joey. That one actually buckled. There you go. We're actually just yawing around on slack tide here. Probably not really expecting much. Oh, dear. <laughs> Got him. Uh, not really expecting much. Because as they say, no flow, no go. But we've got a little bonus fish there. It's just taken off in the rod holder. Now these guys are exceptionally slimy. The best place to grip them is up around the head. The scales are a little bit rougher. But yeah, he's all right. One to the tally. Only on a slack. Just uh, on the slack tie, just throw over. I just use normal chook, chook pellets. No need to go and throw all tuna oil and fish guts in them. But, uh, Why is um, that? can produce and uh, actually bring up, uh, I call them uh, the pesky shit fish, fish but um, it can bring in uh, all the scavengers and everything, but uh, just a little bit on the slack just to keep the whiting interested uh, is uh, definitely a good uh, good move. So. so the pellets will be going straight down on the slack tide? They will be. On the, on the slack tide they'll be uh, just floating around the boat. We're fishing close to the boat at the moment, so when we're just uh, starting to get a few bites now. So we want to keep them interested uh, while we've got no flow in the water. So Fabian, talk us through anchoring for whiting. What are you looking for? What are we doing? Um, at the moment, we're just uh, wanting to fish on the edge of the drop-off. We've got uh, the last of the incoming tide, so we just want to be just on the edge of the bank. Um, when you're whiting fishing, it's a bit like uh, you move along. The channels, it's like from fence post to fence post, so you just move along each each section along the uh, along the bank till you find the whiting. So, but uh, at the moment we're sort of looking around that five five and a half metre mark that we're going to anchor up in and hopefully have some fun with the uh, with some more whiting in the boat. So, is it like an interception type setup? Yeah. Sort of moving along. Moving, yeah, exactly. So m just moving along the bank and actually looking for the whiting. So uh, just dropping the anchor now. Basically, we're just mooching along the edge of a drop off in one of the ma many feeder channels up the top of Western Port here. And it's just a matter of trying various locations until we find the concentration of fish. Obviously, Fabian's using local knowledge and experience and a bit of intuition in order to put the boat in the right spot. But that is basically it. This is drop number three. We've got, we've had a slow start, but the tide is actually not 
completely favourable and we're expecting once it swings around and starts to run out and the water comes out of all these channels it should fire up nicely. So if this was a block of real estate, would you be happy with it? You'd list it? Oh, I definitely would. You'd list it? Okay. Yeah, I'd list, any <laughs> list anything. <laughs> Surely you didn't get my boat. That was a whack and a half. Yeah. We've just moved spots, Joe. Tide has just started to ebb out. Oh, that was a good hit. Missed him. And uh, we're quite hopeful this will be uh, the area. Fabian actually reckons he was marking fish on the sounder, so... We're looking. It was, there's about a 10 metre drop off. And, uh, all these oh, things. there we go. That's not a whiting though. Or is it? Oh. The anti reverse on Joe's reel is playing up, but that's all right. It doesn't feel like a whiting. It is a whiting. It's a good whiting. Oh. That's what we came for. It's starting to get a little bit better, Joey. Good sign. Just got here and bang. So, hopefully, it's the start of things to come. Definitely, uh, we're starting to get a little bit of flow running in this tide now, so, and the fish are starting to bite, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we're in for a really good session. The run out tide always fishes well up here, so. Why's that? Uh, fish just uh, move off that bank and uh, move into the, uh, into the channels just off the bank as the tide starts to flow out, so. Um, complete opposite from when the tide's coming in. You want to move up the bank, but uh, as the tide's coming out, move move into the uh, move into the channels and work along there. And fish get a little bit active as the run as you get a little bit of run in the water. So, a bit of movement. Oh yeah, that's him. That's him. Oh. oh. <laughs> Look at that black magic hook right in the corner of the mouth. That's why we use them. There we go. Oh, that's, oh, that's freaking beautiful. Oh, have you got one? No. Nah. Oh, oh, I actually do. Oh. What is that? That's like a slimy or something. You reckon? Oh. Good one. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's a it's a mega dog. Oh, Joey, it's seven kilos. Holy crap! That is absolutely a, that is an actual tank. That's what we come for. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. That. Is ridiculously big. It's got to be mid 40s. Very nice fish. Well done. Very popular whiting bait is the Pippi Joe. I've been stripped, so I'm going to put another one on. So, Pippies are great, they are a bit soft at times, so you've got to be um, pretty onto it when you're getting bites, like Fabian is behind us there. But anyway, we're just going to basically thread the bait on a bunch of times into a bit of a ball and there's your, your hook protruding even though it looks like you don't have much gape showing because it's a soft bait it'll crunch down and it should set quite nicely but that's basically what we run with we also have some strips of squid here that we can put on as a little bit of security I'm just going to run straight uh, pippy on this one though and then fling him out oh oh that's him that is him baby that's a big one again you're on for I'm on. I'm on. Nice. What are we thinking? Oh, it's a ting dog, isn't it's it? It's a whiting. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, it's, it's another barrel. Ready? Oh, oh that is an absolute... Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I missed mine. We come out targeting these. We got some juvies early, but uh, these are the beautiful fish that we were coming to look for is uh, top end of the bay, turret and uh, beautiful King George whiting. That's 60 centimetres. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love it to be, but I can't stretch it out that far. What's, what have we got there on the measuring? 
43, 44, 44. 44 centimetres. Beautiful. Well done, it's great. Fab, tell us a little bit about Turretin Angling Club. Turretin uh, Angling Club, um, we're a small club, about 35 members, established 1989, so the last 35 years. So we focus heavily on the junior, junior fishing programs there and uh, definitely getting families out there to enjoy fishing all together so it's uh it's good mate and the waters of Turidan are fantastic for a family to get involved with uh fishing in a in a small trailer boat certainly so um Turidan boat ramp can cater for all boat sizes um big ones small ones um just don't come out on a low tide but uh definitely and the the fishing grounds around Turidan and, uh, and the top end of western port bay are, are next level so um, you can go out chasing whiting, snapper, gummies, um, even the mulloway. Um, and uh, there has been sightings of kingfish and that in the channel recently as well. So, why not? <laughs> Is there a gantry we can hang our whiting off? Uh, uh, yeah, we can organise that. <laughs> That's a big one. That's a big girl. Fab. Hey. You absolutely love this type of fishing. Oh, I do. Oh, mate. he's got your other line. It's outsmarted you. Oh, Joey, that was nearly doubles. Ah! Look at that. That's not very good angling. You've done all right. You've done all right. I'm all tangled up. The... I'm all tangled up, but we've got the fish on board safely. The founders of the Turidan Angling Club would not be pleased. No, they would be very disappointed in the effort, I tell you. That was a... That was an unprofessional effort, I tell you. Beautiful. I'm waiting and just slurping the bait off. They I'm are. I'm trying to sell Davey in a boat. I'm not trying to sell him, but I'm, it's a, f a favour. I'm just... It is a favour. Alerting him to the, the possibilities. Oh, 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 oh. oh that's, a, that's a tank. What's got... That's a gummy. That's a gummy. I don't know what it is. That's it's a 60 centimetre whiting. It's on me light rod. That's the oh, your other rod's on. Oh, that was wide. This is a good whiting. Is this, this the 50 centimetre whiting? This may be. the boat sail? It might be a banjo. I <laughs> don't know. It's coming up. We're gonna have to go easy on this one. I it's going like a whiting, but I don't know. It's a, you reckon you're gonna need the net? Oh, I'm getting railed over here. Maybe. Oh, the net's right there, so that's okay. No, what is it? It can't be a whiting. Oh, it's a. Oh, oh, it's, a, it's, an oh an it's an elephant. It's an elephant. <laughs> Elephanto. That's an actual elephant. Wow, I haven't seen one of these in years too. It is actually elephant season, isn't it? It is. That's what's going on. Yeah, bring, bring him up on board. You, did you specify 60 centimetre whiting or was it just anything? Uh, whiting. Do you want me to net it? Because it'll break you later. Yeah, I can get the net if you like. Do they still have a spike on them? Yeah, on, their, on the door. top of the head. They're underneath spike. Oh. I'll get the net. It'd be slippery there, yeah. Oh, it's birthing. Look at that. Black magic hook straight in the corner. They catch anything, these things. Hey, elephants eat peanuts. <laughs> they do. <laughs> wow, an elephant. Look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. They're only here for a few weeks in up the western port, aren't they? They are. They generally live in like 300 metres plus, Joe, those, those elephants. They're gone. And then they come up here and they breed. Oh. Yeah. Get in, get in. Pretty good one. We missed like there. three whiting while you are winding that in. Really? Yeah, yeah I, was, I was a little bit nervous thinking that was going to be a 50 centimetre whiting and I was going to have to buy a boat that's worth 200,000. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Joe. I've just caught planet Earth. 
but um, gives you an idea of some of the ground that is down underneath where we're fishing. All sorts of goopy things. Wow. There's an actual crab living in there. Putting on it. Oh. Yes. He is on. Ah. You have done Have a it. look at him. You're having a wonderful afternoon here. Is that because oh, you put a oh, tentacle on that one? Have a look. Hoist him aboard. Yes. Oh, that's a really nice fish. Absolutely beautiful. Have a look. All right, there we go. Once again, Black Magic KL hooks them beautifully in the up through the lip. That fish was never coming off. Very good. Ooh. Can't wait for your filleting segment later. Oh, really? Yeah. I've been practicing. Look. Force, man. <laughs> <laughs> we made such a good connection. We're calling it, Fabian. We're calling it. Been a great day. Um, we've had uh, plenty of fun after a slow start, but we finally found the fish. So, um, again, today, tougher day with uh, slow tide movement, but uh, definitely the fish did come on as the tide started to flow out. So, but again, great, awesome day. Thank you from myself and Joey for taking us out. Um, Pleasure. Definitely have learnt a fair bit, so been a good day. A few laughs. Yes. Joe's happy. Lining tacos for dinner, you reckon, Joey? Absolutely. Little soft tortilla, squeeze of lime, a little bit of coleslaw, some kind of dressing. Mmm. Chef's kiss. Joey's lighting up at the prospect of cooking all those fish, and I'm lighting up at the prospect of him filleting them all. <laughs>